Hello, Abraxas here, and I'm going to be playing some Universe Sandbox 2. So, this is a suggestion which I can't really specify who suggested this, only because it's been suggested so many times throughout the kind of life of my channel. And that would be, what if we had a second sun? What if there was two suns? What if our sun was a binary system? What if there was a sun orbiting around the sun in the center of the solar system? Now, while I can't really recreate that with the history of what might have happened in the past, I can see what would happen if the sun was just dropped in right now. So let's go ahead and load up my performance solar system. Uh, I, need, I need to really just save this without the particles because I always delete the particles every time. Let's go ahead and get rid of the particles. Let's slow down time so it's not going to go sporadic. Okay, let's see what we can do. Turn down the volume a bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a second sun. Now I think we're gonna have to do this as a balanced binary because if I do it without that, I think bad things will happen if I don't make it a balanced binary. So let's go ahead and just try it without balancing it first. And let's see what horrible things might potentially happen. Yeah, it immediately drifts off the direction I placed it. And there goes Mercury. <laughs> it just consumed Mercury, and now it's just drifting off on its own. All the planets might follow, but uh, the sun is just going to take off towards the direction the other sun was. Oh, they're kind of unstable, too. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and there you go. There's your answer. That's what happens if we have two suns. No, I'm joking. Let's go ahead and uh, relaunch the simulation. I'll leave the particles in. I think it'll be fine. Go ahead and add the sun as a balanced binary system this time, and let's see what happens. Let's give it a little bit of distance from each other, or else uh, bad things might happen. Give it about that far. And let's go ahead and hit play, and let's just watch and see what happens. Are these actually going to be stable here, or are they going to start drifting off? I think they are drifting off. Oh, I forgot to make it a pipe. Dang it, I messed up again. Okay, here we go. Let's do this one more time. This time, let's go ahead and make sure it's balanced right away. Let's grab our other sun. Let's back up. Let's drop it right about right here. And let's go ahead and slow down time. That way it doesn't just take off immediately. And let's see if this is stable. That's pretty good. They're not exactly center. Okay, so some things worth noting. We have twice the solar radiation. We got twice the mass in the center. As you can see, Mercury is kind of a elliptical orbit, but it's moved quite a bit closer. It's an elliptical orbit and it passes pretty close to the sun. In fact, it might grow molten right here. It certainly does. Venus, I can only imagine, let's just solve the time, is a big ball of lava pretty much. Oh, and Earth is coming in pretty close. The oceans have evaporated away. Is it going to start glowing? Don't think it really got hot enough to start glowing. But it did spike up to like 360 degrees Celsius. So I can't say that would be very good for life on this planet. And being close to two suns like that, even with its magnetosphere, might not be too great for the atmosphere either. And there it is doing another pass. It doesn't quite get hot enough to go molten and start evaporating away the atmosphere. Oh, and there goes Mercury. I guess that was only a matter of time. Let's check out Mars. Mars is getting quite warm as well. The polar caps, I don't think, actually evaporate off. I don't think that's actually part of the climate. That might just be part of the texture in the game. Let's watch that again. Here it grows, it goes, growing in temperature. Yeah, that ice doesn't actually melt. That's actually a part of the texture in the game. Well, that's interesting. And where's Jupiter? I think Jupiter is about where Earth orbits now. Uh, It's not really showing the seven major axis, is it? No, it's not even giving me that information. I think it's because it's... uh. Yeah, probably because there's two suns, it doesn't actually calculate that properly. And there's Saturn crossing paths with Jupiter. That's probably not a good thing. And all the other planets are moving closer and closer, and Mercury is just gone. 
So let's go ahead and go to powers and let's just uh, remove the particles and dust and let's just speed up time and just see what happens. See if anything else actually gets ejected. I see the suns actually did start drifting, but everything's following along properly. If we go to view, we can see the orbits. Or not, because there's actually two stars, it's not actually detecting that properly. It just kind of goes to show that this game doesn't actually fully support objects orbiting around binary objects. But things seem quite stable so far, except for Mercury, which is long gone now. So the planets that were previously habitable probably are not. I can't really add the moons here or else I'd probably lag up the game horribly. But I would imagine if there's moons on here, they're, like the moons around Uranus, for example, probably might be uh, pretty tolerable. Around Saturn and Jupiter, yeah, probably too warm. It is two main sequence stars, yellow main sequence stars, so that could be a little bit too much for the moons orbiting around Jupiter and Saturn if Saturn and Jupiter are orbiting this close. Be habitable. Can't really get the uh, distance on that though. Let's see. Should have the distance to the uh, largest body, right? Distance to host, 10 astronomical units. Okay, that might be a little bit too cold. What about Jupiter right now? Let's see, distance to host. Where was that at? Ah, there it is. 4.34 astronomical units. Okay, that, that's not too bad. And Saturn's about the same. As for Earth right now, if we can actually get that selected. I don't imagine Earth is very habitable anymore. Let's see, distance to host, less than an astronomical unit. Let's go ahead and just show this in astronomical units. 0 0.55, so half an astronomical unit. That's half as close as, uh, or I guess twice as close as it used to be. Um, and there's two stars, so Earth, not very habitable anymore. Mars, however, what's going on with Mars? It seems to be orbiting a little bit further away. What's that? Uh, where'd it go? So, 1.68. So, Mars actually might be kind of in the Goldilocks zone here, which, yeah, it actually is. So, Mars actually might be habitable. Well, given you actually have all the parameters and stuff, which is already difficult in itself, but at least temperature wise, it might actually be pretty decent. Currently, it's sitting at 12.1 degrees. What's it spike out at? Yeah, 160 something. 198. Ouch. So it's still orbiting in a pretty big ellipse, and that's not good for it. So if you guys could hear that, that is uh, some frogs. I have my window open right now, and they're deciding to interrupt my recording. But I think that kind of concludes this test anyways. If you guys like the video, please leave it a like. If you like the frogs, please leave it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe. It really does help. And I'll see you guys in the next one.